and welcome back to Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib. I'm Adam Hildebrandt, joined as always by Tiger head coach Josh Blankenship. Uh, looking back at last week's contest against Jinx, uh, the Tigers fell on that one 31-14, uh, but it had it tied back up 14-14 at one point. Coach, let's talk a little bit about the beginning of that game. Jinx came out, started hot, and then the guys were able to, to, to jump back in it, score 14 straight points, and tie it up. Uh, how did you kind of assess that roller coaster of, of the early portions of that game when you went back and looked at it? You know, the first portion was what you kind of expect in a big game like that, a little bit of back and forth. Um, we weren't able to sustain that or get a whole lot going on in offense. But, uh, you know, like uh, when you talk to Mitchell Banning and, and some of those defensive guys, they're starting to find a real comfort level in what they're doing. And uh, then in the second half, defense really rose up again. Uh, love the progression they're making. We've got to get our offense uh, finding ways to get the ball to our playmakers and, and have some more success. You know, the offense uh, ran the ball really well two weeks ago, didn't pass it very well, and then the the, fl the script flipped last week, threw it pretty well, and, and didn't run it as well. Uh, when you're seeing kind of inconsistency from both the running game and the passing game, how do you start to try to mold those things together a little bit? Well, you're constantly trying to mold those things together. Um, you know, you've also got to take what the defense gives you. Um, you know, Jinx's structure on defense is, is bound and determined to spill everything outside uh, in the run game. Uh, and so you either, uh, you know, beat your head against a wall and, <laughs> and, and try to uh, force the issue, which at some point we need to be able to do. Um, but you also want to take what they give you, and we've got to be able to throw and catch the ball. Um, you know, when you're playing a team like that, that that's where, you know, you have to attack. I find that uh, not many people enjoy pounding their head against the wall. So no. <laughs> yeah. let's t uh, talk a little bit more about uh, the progression of the passing game. Again, it was it was a struggle at Westmore. It got better last week. What did you see in terms of some improvements on, on that part of the offense? Uh, we still got to be able to go up and make the catch in difficult situations. I mean, we had some moments where, um, you know, we've got a guy in a position to make a play, and we've got to be able to make the play. Um, that's going to come with uh, more comfort within – uh, uh, the scheme, but then also the chemistry with the guy throwing the ball and the guy running the routes and catching the balls. Um, so uh, we're making progress. We're just not there as fast as I'd like to be. You know, obviously, RJ Spears, Jennings, Marion Horn, uh, they get a lot of attention on the outside. Joshua Wilhite had three catches for 37 yards in that game. Uh, Ryan Fox got a touchdown pass in that game. What do those guys bring to the table in, in terms of the passing game? Uh, they're huge because all the attention goes to those other two guys. And uh, when you got a guy like Fox, I think that was his second touchdown. I think mm -hmm. he caught one in the first game. Um, those guys get a little sneaky. Um, Will Height, um, he was our offensive player of the game uh, from the coaching staff. Um, second time he's done that uh, this season. Um, he's just a steady force, um, obviously, in the run game. Uh, but then when he's effective in the run game, that's when you're able to slip him out and get him some extra catches. You know, is it – what does it take at the high school level? Because, you know, tight ends still might not be that big. They can they can move, obviously, and catch the ball in a case like Will Height. But is it rare to find somebody who can be effective both in the run and the passing game at the high school level at the tight end spot? It is. You're almost looking for a not even a body type, but a, a toughness and a physicality and an intelligence, um, which Josh has all those things. Um, he's able to get nasty, even though he's not as big as maybe some of the guys that he's, he's sticking his head in there. Uh, trying to block, um, but then he's savvy enough to know where to go in the passing game, and then he's he's got good uh, ball awareness uh, and, and uh, does a great job of, of attacking the football when it's in the air. It does, uh, obviously, Griffin, Stever being a, a tight end last year, and they worked together a lot. Does that help with their connection at all, or, or would you expect that with any quarterback and tight end? I'd probably expect that with any quarterback. Um, you know, it's a, the, the tight end passing game is a little bit more unique because he might have to engage with somebody before he separates, or he might have to set something up on a release. Um, so there might be some familiarity there because Steve Bear has done that, but at the same time, I've got a higher expectation of our quarterbacks just knowing how to throw to everybody on the field. Yeah, you mentioned uh, might have to, you know, chip somebody, get, get a piece right. of them before you go out on a route. Uh, that sounds like pretty nuanced type of stuff. How long does it take to, to truly grasp that as a, as a tight end working in the passing game? You know, it depends on the individual. And Will Hyde has picked it up uh, right right out the gate. Um, credit to Coach Gorman and the job that he's done coaching those tight ends. But uh, um, it's, it is a very nuanced thing, and it, it is a unique position. We call them unicorns. They're, you know, they're hard to find. Uh, but if you can find a special one, then they're definitely a weapon. The running game, again, pretty good two weeks ago. Uh, struggled a little bit against Jinx. And, and, again, you mentioned Jinx focuses on stopping the run, trying to trying to spread things out. What did you guys learn about the, the run game, particularly in that game? 
I think more of what we're good at, um, and I know I keep repeating myself every week, but but there is a, a level of finding our identity um, and then matching it with what we have to do against the opponent we're seeing. Um, so trying to live in our home, what we know we are, and then still trying to take advantage of what the defense is going to give us. And Jinx's defense doesn't give you a whole lot. So getting creative and, and how we uh, you know attack those guys was certainly the challenge, and hopefully we get that challenge again. How would you describe Nate Jones' style as a runner? Man, he's smooth and physical. Um, what most people don't see is what he does in pass protection. Um, he is fearless, um, and he'll go put his nose into anybody. It could be a 350-pound nose guard that, that slipped through, or it could be a linebacker with a full head of steam. He's fearless. Um, I'd say that's probably the, the main characteristic that sticks out for me on Nate. Occasionally, he gets to take that out on linebackers and safeties as well if they come up in the run game. All right, that's Josh Blankenship talking a little bit about the Broken Arrow offense. We'll be back with more in just a moment. This is Tiger Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib. Recently, you've had to put your life on hold, and we're with you in this. At Ascension St. John, we're now open for appointments, and we are fully prepared for your safety and our care. As we open our doors again, our doctors, nurses, and care teams will continue to wear personal protective equipment. We've taken even more steps to clean and stringently disinfect all areas. We will maintain distancing in our waiting rooms and will continue to limit visitors. And we will still screen all staff to protect their health and yours. Our emergency rooms are here 24 seven. Please do not delay care. We're still delivering babies and performing surgeries. And we're open for your appointments from specialists in surgical care to routine care and health screenings. Ask us about virtual visits. Ascension St. John continues to care for you, as we have been for almost a century. Thank you for trusting us. Welcome back. It's Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib, Adam Hildebrandt, alongside Tiger head football coach Josh Blankenship. Let's flip the script over to the defense. Jinx was able to move the ball some in the first half. The defense really locked things down in the second half. What, what changed uh, from half one to half two? Uh, a couple things. I think Coach Mon really got in a in a rhythm of of uh, feeling like he knew what they were trying to do, um, and so he, he really got in a again a rhythm of of what he was calling and and, and attacking what they were going to do. Um, I thought the the main thing that we had to make an adjustment on was those big shots that we were giving up. Uh, it was the same thing the previous week at Westmore, um, where you held them in check for the most part, but then you get a big gadget player a shot. We can eliminate those things. Uh, man, the defense is really flying around and making some good things happen. And you've got another defensive touchdown as well. This is starting to become consistent with either defensive scores, special team scores. This time it was Dietrich Moore. I don't remember. I think the first one he had, the pick six, might have got come back with a penalty. So he gets in the end zone this time, and it holds up. He is so athletic. I mean, you see him returning punts, stepping in front of passes. With him in the middle of that defense, what do you think are his biggest strengths? He is, uh, his football IQ is off the charts, um, and then you add a toughness factor. You cannot take that guy off the field. He d- it doesn't matter what's hurting him, what bothers him. Uh, he's going to find a way to push through. Uh, adversity is nothing to him. He's locked in on his job and making plays. You know, we'll hear from uh, Mitchell Banning during this show as well. For those guys up front, uh, what what have you seen out of them in terms of their strengths as a unit this year? Unbelievable growth. Um, you know, uh, Banning, McVeigh, uh, those two guys, especially being the interior guys, um, had an unbelievable offseason. Uh, their work ethic was unreal. Uh, what they started doing in the weight room was unreal. Uh, was really hoping it would pan out in, in the season. And it has so far. Those two guys have, have matured tremendously, and, and they're making a huge impact. And, again, kind of like we were talking about, Nate doesn't – you know, what he does a lot of time in pass protection isn't seen. A lot of people don't see what, what those two guys in the inside doing all the dirty work, uh, what goes on there. Um, they are getting it done at a high level, and that's why you've got guys like Dietrich and Jadan being able to make the plays that they're making. And then you throw in some guys like Briley Ferguson in there as well. It seems like that's a pretty consistent two deep across the board. How, how important is depth up front defensively? It's huge. You know, if you have to take your first group out on the, uh, on the defensive line, which you have to at some point, um, that next wave that goes in, uh, there can't be a drop off. And so far, uh, those guys are doing a great job of, of maintaining the success that they're having up front. You mentioned uh, the the comfortability level is growing in the defense. And we've seen some offenses, Union, uh, Owasso certainly jinx that, that throw a lot of different looks at you. Uh, how important is that comfortability level just in terms of getting lined up correctly and being able to win individual battles? Because if you're not yeah. lined up correctly, it really doesn't matter. And it sounds so simple, but that is the number one battle is can you line up correctly? 
Um, if we can get guys aligned correctly, they know their assignment, then they've got a shot. And so that is battle number one, is getting everybody lined up right. That is Broken Arrow head football coach Josh Blankenship. We'll be back with Mitchell Banning in just a moment. This is Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib. Everybody loves spending fun money. What would you do if TTCU Federal Credit Union gave you $200? Maybe something fun for someone else. Or something for you and your bestie. Now you can earn a $200 bonus just for opening a new TTCU checking account with direct deposit. Now that's fun money you can really enjoy. TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. Hello and welcome back to Inside Tiger Football. I'm Adam Hildebrandt. We're joined now by Mitchell Banning, a defensive lineman for the Tigers. Uh, Mitchell, let's let's talk through a little bit of this season so far. Uh, there's been some ups and downs, certainly. How do you feel like you guys have performed as a defense so far? Uh, I think we've performed great. I just there's going to be some adversity, and uh, I don't think we handled it as well as we could have. I think that's what's caused a little bit of the downfall. But I think we're on an up uh, uphill climb right now. And certainly, uh, I think anybody who's watched games consistently over the course of a year has been able to see consistent improvement. And, and you guys, as a defense, I mean, you gave up three points in the, in the second half against Jinx the other night. You had a really good game against Westmore. Uh, what do you like? I mean, you're you're on what your fourth coordinator in four years, at least your third in three. What, what do you like about this current scheme, this current strategy that you guys are running with? Uh, I like it a lot. We get in there, just fight a lot. So you can get the quarterback the fastest between the D line. That's kind of like a little competition competition between us. Okay, so uh, who generally wins that competition? Uh, me or McVay? <laughs> me or McVay has <laughs> got uh, he's you know he's got to kind of bowl his way up the middle a lot of the time oh, yeah. to get there. Uh, you guys certainly uh, do a lot of things that allow the linebackers to get free. Dietrich Moore, Jadanian Floyd, right? Those guys behind you. Uh, what's it like working with them and, and knowing that you you might not always get the tackle, but you're trying to hold somebody up so that, so that they can go get one. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. We like to take up the many blockers as we can for our linebackers to come over and make the plays. We're a D line. We're not always going to make the play, but we're going to make sure that our linebackers do. You know, defensive line can be a grind. You're, you're constantly hitting guys. It's basically like a, a wrestling match, but you're, oh, yeah. you're standing up the entire time. Uh, what do you like most about about playing D line? Uh, I like the I like the fighting in there. I like to I like to get in there and get dirty with them. All right, favorite favorite play. W- would you rather? Uh, get a big hit on the quarterback or scoop up a fumble that somebody else caused? Uh, Probably hit on quarterback. Okay. He likes to go hit people. That's why I, I like that in my defensive <laughs> oh, line. Yeah. That's Mitchell Banning. We'll be back with more in just a moment. This is Inside Tiger Football brought to you by Rib Crib. Just a reminder, there will come a time when they can no longer share a bedroom. That's why we have a complete array of home loans, so that dream of more space can come true. Right on time. First National Bank of Broken Arrow. The right balance. Welcome back one more time to this edition of Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib. As we look ahead to the coming game, Edmund Memorial coming up this week. Coach, what have you seen in them so far? Uh, another dangerous team. Uh, we've got to go over to their place. I think that's, um, was that five out of six on the yeah, road? Yeah, I think it's assumed at this point that right. we're playing on the road. Um, got to go over to the west side. Um, you know, it's a, that's a new venue for me. You know, back when I was coaching in, in Oklahoma and then even playing, all the Edmund schools played at UCO, and now Edmund Memorial's got their own stadium. So uh, we're going to go to their place. Um, they're like everybody we see. Uh, they're dangerous. They've, they've got um, some guys that are very, very talented, very physical, fast. Um, but again, you know, we always talk about the fact that we got to focus on us. Obviously, uh, you know, as a coach, you're, you always are wanting to see improvement. But what's one area that you would most like to see improvement this week? Consistency in our offense and progression, continued progression from our defense. Um, I'd love to see our defense just completely uh, own a game from start to finish. Um, they're so close to doing that. Offensively, uh, we're too sporadic. You know, we'll have a, you know, a series or two where we'll move the ball and then we'll either stall out, have to kick a field goal turn the ball over, get a stupid penalty. Um, so to be more consistent on offense um, is, is what we're looking for. There you have it. That one will be uh, on AeroVision this week as well. So looking forward to having that one uh, on the call with the fellas. All right. Broken Arrow and Edmund Memorial coming up this weekend. That'll do it for this edition of Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib.